We are at Bitspiration Festival in Krakow and my guest is Ashwin Navin. Hello, Ashwin. Hi. Could you please brief, briefly introduce yourself? Tell us what you do professionally. Uh, sure. So um, uh, I consider myself an entrepreneur. Uh, I've started uh, or been a part of starting three companies in my life. Uh, I absolutely love the process of starting companies and uh, organizing a team you know, to take on a big challenge and uh, solve a problem. Um, I enjoy it so much that lately I've been trying to invest in other startups also. So in addition to running a company that uh, I started about five years ago, I've invested in about 22 startups, uh, very early stage startups. Okay, you are co-founder of BitTorrents. How did you come up with the idea of running that? Um, well, truthfully, BitTorrent was invented by a guy uh, that I was introduced to. Uh, and he was very eager to commercialize the technology. And so at the time, I was uh, at Yahoo uh, in a business uh, capacity. And my uh, mutual friend with the inventor introduced us. And the inventor of BitTorrent asked me to basically commercialize the technology. At the time, it was an open source project. Uh, and it was getting increasing amounts of notoriety. Um, I, at Yahoo, worked for a movie studio chief. I was the CEO of the company at the time I was there. And so I had a pretty good feel for both the technology side as well as for the entertainment side of the world. Uh, and so he asked if I would help him uh, basically uh, commercialize and stay out of jail. <laughs> uh, here at Bispiration, we are speaking about uh, music industry in digital, digital, revo during the, uh, sorry, <laughs> digital revolution. Uh, so I'd like to ask you, if what do you think? Should musicians be afraid of free file sharing or is there any way to take advantage of that? It's a tough question. I mean, that's uh, been a question now for, what, 14 years since the, you know, sort of the popularity of Napster was, was pretty well known. Um, you know, we've all believed that there was an, a, a role for free and open distribution of music uh, in, a, in a sort of commercial landscape. Um, at the time, Napster was vilified. Um, you know, but the backdrop was that music consumption was growing substantially. We were able to, you know, consume and collect more music than we were ever able to in, in previous eras. And we're also able to consume it on the go now, pretty much anywhere where we are. So from a pure demand perspective, demand is huge um, because the format is so flexible and easy to use. Um, I think the way the music industry should be looking at this phenomenon, and I think they have in recent years, is to look at piracy as a form of competition. You know, it's, a, it's an experience that has to be viewed as a competitor and you can't stamp it out through legal action. Uh, and if you view it as a competitor, then uh, you can enable services like Spotify or you can enable you know, Beats and iTunes and all these things. Uh, and what we've seen in a lot of parts of the world is that those legal services are actually eroding piracy because they offer a better experience for the content that people care about. Truthfully, piracy can be beaten just because uh, you know, it's not always the most user-friendly thing. Okay, so how do you think what's the biggest challenge uh, for music producers right now? Well, it's for the music companies and for the video companies, it's sort of the same problem. You've got uh, a channel conflict. Uh, I've got a, you've got a business model that's been very lucrative for a long time that gets you a very decent amount of money for an album. You know, and the album in, in and of itself is a less relevant format than the track, as we know. And what the price that people might be willing to pay on the web may be different today than it was in the past. I mean, surely the amount of music that's available to us is larger than it ever has been. Uh, the cost of producing uh, music is, is much lower than it ever has been. Um, the, the value per hour of production is lower than it ever has been. So uh, the industry sort of stands in conflict with these sort of trends that, you know, the perceived value is lower. I do, people, I do feel people believe in uh, paying for a good experience and supporting artists. Um, so, you know, to the extent that the industry can be thinking about how do we build the best possible experience for our brands, for our artists, whether it's in the, in the live performances, it's in the packaged products, it's in uh, creating a sort of memorable experience every time someone en engages with those artists, uh, and then maintaining a persistent connection with the audience and growing that, uh, the richness of that connection. I think that's basically the future that they have to create. Uh, thank you, Let. Uh, your work uh, as um, smart TV application producer, let's say, how do you think the future of television would look, would look like in a few next years? Uh, probably not going to change that much. Um, TV moves at a very, very slow pace. Um, you've got a, a, you know, a very large group of consumers. Now, if you, you know, sort of take the reach of the web today, you could multiply that by factors of maybe two or three, and that would be the reach of television. 
uh, television reaches a lot of people and it reaches them for a long period of time every day. Um, in the U.S., um, you know, I, I'd love to know if you, you have some stats on the Polish market, but in the U.S., um, people watch on, aver on average 5.2 hours of TV per day. That compares to about an hour of browsing the web on average. The reach of television is 280 million people and the reach of the web is 220 million people. 2014 numbers. You know, so the, the TV is powerful. Uh, the behavior patterns that people have when they watch TV are pretty well established. Uh, add on top of that that the business models for television are massive. So if you were to take all of Facebook's revenue, all of Google's revenue, all of Yahoo's revenue, YouTube, etc., uh, you don't even get half of the amount of revenue that exists in television. You know, uh, you, uh, if you add up subscriptions and advertising in television, you're now talking about three or four X the amount of revenue that exists on the web. So you've got a very established consumer pattern. And you've got a very, very nice business model uh, that people will fight to prevent uh, disruption around. Um, so, you know, as, an, as a technologist, we have to be very careful and very thoughtful about how we want to play in this market. You know, how we, what we want to bring to the consumer, what value we want to provide. Uh, I'm not expecting a lot of change, in other words. Okay, thank you a lot for this conversation. Ashvin Navin was my guest. Thank you.